Hello, a couple of weeks ago now, I put up a video about the top part of the Stepper Leslie speaker machine that I built. Well today we're going to go about finishing this project by building the baffle into another skeleton enclosure. You might think it's a bit silly putting it in a skeleton enclosure when it requires the uh, outside a little bit to resonate. Well yes this is true, um, inevitably this is aimed to go to the museum for people to play. I think having it in a skeleton way, number one looks quite interesting, number two it's really cool to microphone for recording sessions and number three if people want to use normal Leslie speakers well they're all so available at the museum so I think it'll be a win-win if we make a cool skeleton one. Anyway, let's build the bottom half. This is the other part of the Leslie speaker that we're taking apart. It's rotten. In fact, I reckon, yeah, some of the wood's just coming to pieces. But we'll take the middle part off that's got the baffle. Oh, oh yeah. And have a closer look at it. So let's get all the bits we need off this rotten saddle bit of wood. This is the baffle assembly and it rotates underneath the speaker which is placed on the other side of the bit of wood right here. So we're going to take those bits off and save it for safekeeping. We need to completely dismantle it it seems because the parts that we need to get to which are connected to the old AC motor are right at the bottom of the whole thing. So let's pull this bit of metal off that keeps the baffle straight. We're going to remember how it all go back together because we need to put it back together. On the bottom of the baffle is a large belt sprocket and a v-drive belt so uh, we're going to keep this all together because we're going to keep the same gearing which means the stepper motor needs to run at about twice the speed of the baffle to rotate around but it's good enough to work so we're going to get the other sprocket off of the original motor which is this bit right here and we're going to put that onto the stepper motor so let's get that pulled off and it was as easy as a flickety flickety boo now we're going to remove the original motor we don't need that anymore we're going to get this aluminium panel and uh, make a cutout for the speaker to sit above it. So we're going to get this reel to reel uh, and we're going to use that to get the size and then cut it out. Being careful not to cut your fingers in the process. Be very careful now. And after we've got that out, we're going to clean up the hole with a bit of a file and it looks quite nice. That's a big old gap. And then we figure out where the holes go to hang the baffle from, pull it off, give it a little bit of a brushing polish just to kind of avoid people looking at all the scratches that I've made. And then we're going to cut a new hole in the shaft that was on the end of the motor so we can put the stepper motor into that shaft so we can bolt it all together onto a new motor. We're going to whack out the donkey saw again and we're going to make a new frame. This donkey saw has been incredibly helpful and the people that were saying the wheels aren't going to help it work, well it works perfectly fine. It's all good and you know the most important thing is, is it makes a fantastic dance partner. Also I must apologise, I've got the sorest throat right now. It's not working, I'm trying to sound excited but I'm getting all club key. I've got a lot better at the old welding, that's the thing, you practice stuff and you get good at it and I've used these 90 degrees clamps which means I can make things square and whack on the hammerite paint and you will be none the wiser that it was built by an idiot. So we're going to put the panel onto the top of it and then work out how to get the stepper motor onto it. So I used this uh, little kind of bracket that would fit in the original holes where the original motor sat. So now we've got a stepper motor sat there which is a large NEMA 17 which are really quiet running. I really like this motor. I would definitely recommend it. Um, so now we've got it all connected up to the baffle like it would have been with the original motor. We could put it into its housing and start giving it a nice little smoosh of paint. I did it red on the actual baffle to show where the sounds come out. People were uh, uh, suggesting using lights, but I, 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 you can't beat a nice bit of red hammerite. Makes it look like a classic museum display piece. Anyway, we're going to use an Arduino. This is the same circuit as in the previous video. If you're curious how it works, then check out that last video. The code is also available and a link below on my website. So this is the original horn that we built in the last video. I've got a multi-point connector there that is called a Cinch Jones connector and we're going to use that to be able to connect all of the connection pieces over to the baffle via this multi-core cable. We'll talk about what's going on there later in the video but let's first get uh, a few fine tuning knobs in there because people wanted a bass level so it would always spin instead of stop. So you can fine tune the slowest setting. Right, let's give it a go, let's plug it, let's plug some sound in and then mess around with it. Right, let's just plug in something simple and then we'll go from there. So I'm just going to plug in a drone. Change the direction. 
So the eagle eyes amongst you will know that there is a red bit now, and that is actually where the sound comes out. So the other one is a counterweight, as you know. Look at the image of the Leslie. Yeah, you see there's a, there's a passage that goes up through this cone, not through the other cone. This one, uh, black on the back and then red on the outside. I know people are saying, oh, it's got to be covered up here, but then you don't see the beautiful speaker. It's kind of like more of a showpiece, uh, just as much of a showpiece as an audio piece. So just appreciate it for what it is. I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. I think it looks cool. Anyway, we've got the audio going in that connects to the crossover that's in here. And then the crossover takes the high end audio and sends it out of this cone. And then the low end goes through this multi-core connector, this Jones plug right here, and it travels over to the other speaker via this multi-point connector right here. This multi-core cable also has the MIDI going over to this, the control voltage going over to this, and also the power for it all. MIDI in channel one, it's actually modulation now, so I've got to cross that out and write a new one. And we've also got separate control voltage in for this one and control voltage in for the other one. There is also a zero knob on the top. I've placed it in such a way that whenever you twist it, you hit yourself. I'm gonna now treat this as a bit of the concept, a conceptual faux pas. And then we've also got a direction chain. This is connected straight to the stepper motor driver direction pin, so you could just flick it left and right. And yeah, direction doesn't really make a difference. However saying that over on Patreon a few weeks ago when I started sharing the concept of this idea in the machine, uh, Mr. Hammond commented mentioning that the in a classic Leslie the treble horns and bass rotate in opposite directions. When Hammond Suzuki reissued the 122 as the 122 XB, the first editions had the rotor actually spinning in the same direction. Some people started complaining that the Leslie sounded different. I think they corrected that, that mistake now and gave people with the wrong configuration the possibility to have it fixed. Having tested these things out, the direction doesn't tend to matter, but it's more the relationship between the baffle and the horn. So there's a direction one on here as well. So we're gonna make this one spin that way and that one spin that way. Lovely, jubbly, how cool is that? The speed's a little bit more friendly on this one. <laughs> but like I said, we've got control voltage. So let's set a zero point really slow. Actually, let's set it to zero for this because I like it when it goes from nothing to something. Right. I've got the control voltage plugged into the envelope generator that is controlled by the baseline. So the idea is when the filter comes up on the base, you're gonna have a spinning situation. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's an example of these being used like a synthesizer module, like uh, something that adds emphasis to every note whenever you play a note, which I haven't seen Leslie's do before. It's just a fun experiment, is it? The next piece we're gonna look at is using these with analog sequences to be able to sequence the way they spin around so there's more of a sequence to them spinning. This is a bit of a faux random sequence, but it is a sequence nevertheless. I call this piece Ships in the Night being followed by a load of Apache helicopters. Enjoy. Right.
If you look closely, it is now being controlled by the modulation touch wheel that is on my left hand. The problem with this, obviously, is you can only play the keyboard with one hand. So we need to find a solution for this. As you saw, if you control it that way, you can only really use one of your hands because the other hand, you've got to be adjusting the modulation wheel. So that's when I made this. It is a modified volume pedal, but what does it do? Well, it is an expression pedal. So it converts the foot motion over to the modulation data that this stuff needs. So I repurposed an old volume pedal, it's this one, and it strangely had no parts in it. I don't know what happened to them, but you'll see there is basically a volume knob that is controlled by a cam that is connected to the foot pedal. So we're going to use that potentiometer to be uh, plugged into the Arduino, which then we program to be able to send modulation data out via the MIDI cable. I did a full hour and a half long video of this. It's full time, real time of building it and coding it is available over on YouTube membership and Patreon. But if you're interested, this is the code that I've ended up with. It is, it does the job well enough for this function. There's a, there's millions of ways of making it slightly more complicated, but this will work. And this is also available over on the website on the same page. Anyway. Oh, ho, ho. looking good. There we go. Turn all of the feedback and resonance off. Turn it into an organ. of a polyphonic keyboardist myself, but if you are, you can play this over at this museum, it's not obsolete, but... The Leslie is a relatively subtle modulation that you take for granted. And yes, it's always on when you're playing it, you can flick the speeds between fast and low on a normal one, but I think it's quite interesting to be able to jump between all of the notes quite instantaneously, from zero up to max, and up and down as you're playing it with your foot pedal. Whilst it doesn't seem that useful when you're listening to it, when you actually think about what it's doing, even though it's slightly subtly different, it is pretty cool.
this is my voice through the stepper Leslie. Um, yes, yeah, so I really like the way this looks. It is half a display piece for the museum and half a functional item, as you know. This actually has a sound of its own. Compared to the other Leslies that we've looked at before, this one has a much more direct tone. There's a lot less low mids, uh, which is quite interesting. Still always having a challenge to record it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. There's a bunch of vlogs, extra audio and extra footage and stuff uh, talking about this project and all of the projects that I've been putting up because I've been talking about this project over on Patreon for about a month now, maybe two months, I don't know. But yeah, if you want to support these videos and also support the museum, then uh, support on Patreon or come and have a look for yourself. But this museum is not obsolete. Anyway, I'm Sam, look, I'm no computer. Ciao for now, toodly doo.